considering the title of this video, you may already know most of the pointers I'm going to be talking about today, the advice I'm going to give. And if you just so happen to be that person, a veteran orchid grower, still watching the video, I want to say thank you so much for supporting the channel with your view. And if you have anything to add afterwards, please do so because information like this is what I can give based on my own experience. And it may not be as comprehensive as with other pointers. So five years growing this specific orchid has given me the unfortunate, depending where you're coming from or fortunate, opportunity to share pointers as to how not to grow an orchid. Specifically, if your climate makes it possible to grow your orchids outdoors for the majority of the year, bar any freak weather conditions that are out of the norm. For the non-veteran orchid growers watching this video, thank you as well for clicking on this video. I hope that it helps your future decision-making process if you are on the market for hardy orchids that can tolerate your climate outdoors for the entire year. When I refer to hardy, I mean know your absolute lowest temperature ever recorded, not what your normal temperatures are, as in my absolute low has been 4 degrees Celsius for a single night. Usually it is 5 degrees at night, and when it gets that cold, then it can stay there for several nights in a row. So consider covering your worst case scenario when you decide to get an orchid and think it's going to be perfectly fine outdoors. Take that into consideration. Worst case scenario. If you have the odd radical temperature low, it does not mean you cannot go ahead and cultivate the orchid, but consider a contingency plan for that single night or nights on how you are able to protect the orchid in the interim, whether it is in the ground or in a pot. If you have such an orchid and unusual low temperatures are in the forecast, find a spot where the orchid has more protection or perhaps in a corner if it's going to go into a ground where you know that you can have a little bit more control of that area should things get a bit radical and where you can provide some kind of cover like a frost cloth to take the edge off while the unusual conditions persist. So I'm giving you this advice and yet my bias looks as shoddy as it does. Does that mean I'm not following my own advice? No, and I will explain what I've tried over the past years, but it is obvious that what I've tried is not effective and the main cause of this was before the orchid even joined my collection. You see, I did not have the foresight of ensuring space for this big orchid in my winter grow space, my holding area during the colder months of the year. My collection grew faster than I allowed time to see how the outdoor orchids would handle my first two seasons. And I say two because we have a mean, that's what we can work with, that's our experience in our environment, and then there's these, you know, freak radical differentials that we then have to deal with. So that's why I say two seasons, just in case there is that oddball out freak event. So first of all, my collection grew too fast and there is no room in the inn in the winter for this size of an orchid. She has to take the brunt of the elements come what may. So a bit of advice I can give you on that front is make sure that you find an ideal permanent spot for your orchid that protects it from any worst case scenario your most adverse conditions were to throw at you. That includes wind protection, direct sun protection, especially during the hottest months of the year because adverse conditions do not only apply during the winter. Harsh conditions can and will occur during the summer as well. So when considering orchids that are suitable for your climate, where you can pretty much leave them outside all year round, while it is best practice to focus on the lowest temperatures your climate can throw at you, do not forget the opposite end of the spectrum. So what did I get wrong with my orchid when I bring this to your attention? Well, I did not consider that the conditions on my patio would turn out to be as harsh as they are. During the warmest months of the year, the patio for the majority of the day is in full sun. There is no escape corner for me to place my orchid where it won't get hit and scorched no matter the time of day. I can move the pot back further towards the corner at the far end of the patio so that the morning heat won't hit it. However, that would only last two hours and then the sun is full blast there. Where the orchid is positioned now is where I can have it another two hours, after which, same thing. At 3 p.m., I would then have to place the orchid in the corner by the rack on the east side, 
where it will be in full shade for the rest of the day, but I would have to move it back into the far corner of the patio before the next morning because that corner by the rack is a hot spot first thing next morning. I could also place my orchid on the west side for the majority of the day until the sun reaches that area and then it turns into an oven for this specific orchid. So while I have these options, the constant moving of this orchid gets old very fast and life has it that I'm not always around to ensure that I get the timing right. It took one morning of this orchid being in the corner by the east rack, the sun rose, I was not around. When I got back, the pseudobulbs were brown where the sun had hit them and they were roasting hot, as hot as a baked potato coming out of the oven. They were cooked. If space permits, I will be growing this orchid indoors in my grow space this growing season while all the other orchids are glam camping. That is not a guarantee though, because space in that area is limited during the summer as well. But in order to see if I can do better by this orchid, <laughs> it is something I need to figure out if I can. We shall see. Anyway, one thing that can help in avoiding the heat, even with an orchid like this that can take full sun, is airflow. I have plenty of that. Make sure you have plenty of airflow as well. But I would like to warn you about relying too much on any wind you have in your climate, cooling your orchids down if you do not have high enough humidity to counteract the drying out effect that warm wind has as a secondary side effect. If you have a windy climate while temperatures are at their highest, then know that many orchids need high humidity to ensure the cooling of the leaves, especially orchids that have leaves that are thin in the cuticle structure. Burnt tips and shredded broken leaves are a result of strong wind in combination with low humidity climate while the temperatures are high. The other side of the spectrum is cold wind. The symptoms are the same even if nothing affected the leaves during the hot temperatures. If the temperatures drop to a point that is too exposed for the orchid, leaf tips will turn brown and go crispy as well. In addition to that, the result of excessive exposure to cold temperatures will result in spotting where the dew droplets cool the leaf down even further while exposed to the cold temperatures. Unfortunately, here on the patio, despite the best intentions to prepare an orchid that has to deal with the great outdoors, no matter what, strengthening the orchid with nutrients and supplements will not be a deterrent for environmental factors to damage the orchid. So that is not something you can rely on. When it comes to growing new growths, I do concentrate on calcium and plenty of magnesium to help the orchid out in preparation of what could be in its future. However, in this particular example, the leaf characteristics are such that no amount of nutrients will ward off the damage which outdoor elements are capable of doing. Meanwhile, if you're getting some value out of this video, would you do me a solid and hit that like button? I would appreciate that and consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already done so. This may not be the stellar video of perfect blooming orchids that wow and impress, but here on my channel, you get the ugly and the sad of the hobby paired with the why it has come to this. So it would be awesome to have your vote of confidence. Thank you so much. All in all, if you find yourself in a similar situation and you are dealing with an orchid that can handle 60% of your conditions while not thriving and growing to its best potential, know that it is a great learning curve as to what you can and cannot grow well in your conditions. This goes for any orchid, not just ground orchids or semi-terrestrial orchids. Back in the day, my research told me that my fires would be hardy in my climate, but that is all I focused on. Now that she has been with me for five years, I have come to understand that this orchid would not be in my collection if I had known how the lack of humidity, the lack of shade during the hottest months of the year, and the lack of space indoors to protect the orchid from unusually low temperatures would affect the negative growth progress of this orchid. All I saw was low temperatures and told myself, bingo, she's big but she can live outdoors. And that was the extent of my decision-making process. I didn't consider anything else. And well, yes, she can live outdoors, but she is not happy, clearly, and neither am I, but I only have myself to blame. Everything else is not a good match for this particular orchid in my collection. Yes, she still blooms for me, but the point is to get happy blooming orchids to the best of our ability, right? 
So I hope that this lack of foresight and lack of judgment on my part helps you out when you decide on an orchid that can handle your outdoor conditions and you then go ahead and purchase it. Can you provide protection for your orchid if the going gets tough whenever, no matter the time of year? If I had asked myself that question before buying this orchid, the answer would have been an emphatic no. And with that, she would not be on the patio. Sure, I would have missed out on watching a beautiful nun's orchid bloom. The blooms are gorgeous, but I have pleasure out of this orchid for the three weeks that she is in bloom and the rest of the time I feel terrible. That is not the balance that I want in my orchid growing hobby. I don't mind to have terrible times with an orchid if the percentage is lower than the enjoyment of caring for an orchid. Let me know if you have any questions about any other orchids you're contemplating or you're not sure about. I know that Fios is not an orchid that everyone grows, but as you can see, she is the perfect example for the subject of this video. And I hope that you can apply my observations for your own collection, be it orchids you already have or orchids you intend to add to your collection. Thank you so very much for watching. Your support is appreciated. I wish you a wonderful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.